Hello Libra, welcome to your weekly reading with me, Cindy. I'm kind of cold. <laughs> so I'm warming up. This room is nice and warm. We just spent a couple hours outside, organized. Um, I'm filming on Halloween for you. Um, so yeah, I always try to, I'm now, as I used to, try to film a few days ahead of time so everything can get processed and edited and uploaded. Um, so yeah, we did, because the kids are not going door to door tonight, I organized a little, um, hunt and treat or seek and treat in the woods with some friends so we put a whole bunch of treat bags together and hid them in the woods and so the kids dressed up in their costumes and they got to find all the trees it's kind of fun actually but i got cold after standing in the woods for two hours so here we are i'm going to warm up with you guys this week is high priestess week so we're going into the deep dark recesses of the unknown for you we're using just oracle decks I'm um, going to do the Witches Oracle. I'm going to get you an incantation, but the incantation comes at the end so that it, you can feel empowered when you leave the reading. Um, we're going to look into your potency, what your strength is, your kryptonite, what your weakness is, um, your nemesis, which also makes you stronger, and your next assignment. So we're going to build on that. There is an extended at the end of this reading if you are so drawn to it. The link is at the top of the description. In the extended, I'm going to use tarot cards and we're going to find out what from your past still pulls on you. What in your future is pushing on you, like pushing you forward. How this push and pull is affecting you. And then we're going to ask how to allow all things to flow freely. So that'll be the extended. But right now, I'm going to start with the singing bowl to clear the energy and to allow the high priestess energy to come in. So I did it with um, Virgo and um, I deal out all the cards and then when I'm editing the video I speed it up. So you can still see me um, shuffling the cards but it shouldn't take as long and then I go right into the reading. So let me know what you thought of that. What do you think of that? And I'll decide if I want to keep doing it. I think in terms of watching the video it'd be good. I get bored <laughs> watching people shuffle so I'll be honest so that's why I'm kind of doing that. So. All right, I'm gonna start shuffling. <laughs> Okay, I have shuffled and the cards have come out. Um, interesting, interesting. So your potency. For your potency. Ooh, sorry, my fingers are warming up. Screw little stuff. Victory, the bat, and she who questions. And she who questions also has curiosity, um, destiny, and search. This is a really interesting potency, guys. Really interesting. So your strength here is you, um, I sort of want to say, with victory being your strength, 
you don't want to stop until you find victory. It's a little bit like no matter how many times the universe life situations kind of knocks you down, you still get up and you still brush yourself off. Um, determined to have success. Determined to find success. Even if that means the last breath you take at the end of your life. I almost feel like with these cards here, your success, like for you, it kind of is not giving up. It's not giving up. Maybe you don't achieve what you would hope to achieve, but you seem to have um, this undeniable desire within you to always question and always want to find more and want to understand more. Very curious, wondering how the world works, how you work within the world. Destiny and search, like this also feels like a very spiritual, spiritually led, particularly with the bat. Um, this is very ancestral energy for me and it is listening to, to your intuition, following the synchronicities, the breadcrumbs, being guided. But you look for it. I think you actively look for it with curiosity and search coming into here. She who questions. I also feel like part of your potency here with victory and search and curiosity and she who questions is, you know, things that maybe seem like uh, success or how you would define success. But questioning that and looking at it and really getting to the deeper parts of it, like really is this successful? Is this successful because we've been programmed to believe it's successful? But Or is this successful because this is something that I truly want and desire? And I feel it like on a deep, the core of me. I feel this on the core of me. That's what I feel like with it. It's a really interesting potency. It's really wanting to try to find the answers and in some way, too, you may not be looking for success specifically in an area of your life, but because you possess this curiosity and the search, but the search kind of leads you to your destiny, to different destinies throughout your lifetime. Because you are practicing in a, on a very intuitive level. So it's pretty interesting, a pretty interesting strength is victory. <laughs> Don't mess with Libra. My success, my strength is victory. All right, now this is interesting. Your kryptonite, your weakness. You have healer of the ages, horse, and then this is she who surrenders, chains, bondage, and release. This is your kryptonite, right? I do feel like, so this is kind of interesting. Um, when you've been through something that's, let's say, has uh, kind of knocked you, knocked you on your butt, or um, the rug has been pulled out from under you in some sort of situation in your life, you do, you do take the time to heal. I feel though, like sometimes you may even get stuck in this healing process. It's a really a funny energy, actually, because with the victory, like I really sense that you you achieve it. You find maybe you don't see how much you actually achieve. Because this here, like look at her, her body, what she's communicating with her body. It's it is very sorrowful. I mean, this is your weakness. Your weakness is in some sense like the things that have knocked you down. In life. Healer of the ages too though is often like someone who heals others. This is reminding me a bit of another energy that was coming through where in one of the readings this week um, giving a lot of yourself and maybe not giving enough giving a lot of yourself to others and not giving much of that to yourself as much as you could as much as you need to.
where there may be things in your life that you feel defeat in, it doesn't stop you from finding victory in other things, but it does seem to take you a while. Or there's definitely um, something about your healing process that prolongs. Maybe you get into a bit of a melancholy state and it can be easy to sit in that. Or not so much easy, but there's almost like comfort in it because it feels safe. It feels a little bit isolated maybe. But I, I really do want to say with this is your kryptonite is, you know, think about giving yourself as much healing energy as you can give to others. Because mm. <clears throat> the bat is coming in as your strength. And the horse is coming in underneath one of, like, your kryptonite, your weakness. So, and you see, like, for me, the bat is really being intuitively connected. Like, uh, using your, so your echolocation. <laughs> like, using elements that maybe other people don't pull on for themselves as, easy, as easily as you do. But, and that finds your victory, but the things that bring you defeat, I only, like there's just a crescent, just a sliver of a moon in the third eye of the horse. So the movement, when you feel defeat in something, I do feel a bit like uh, you are, you might be intuitively blocked in that. And your intuition is really strong on things that where the rug has not been pulled out from under you. And it isn't to say that you don't get back up again, but there's definitely almost some, yeah, like maybe even just a weakness in your own intuition. In terms of guiding yourself through some sort of a defeat. So your nemesis, this is so interesting. What makes you stronger? You got the door to personal healing and happiness. Your, your weakness is healer. And your nemesis is door to healing and happiness. It might be hard for you to believe, but like, I feel like the hardest things that you go through are probably the things that give you the most victory. And even if it doesn't feel like you're getting victory in that aspect of your life, it is somehow energetically feeding victory in other aspects of your life. Because if the healer is a weakness, like it makes you feel very defeated. It makes you feel, when you feel defeat, you feel it hard. And it's kind of funny. I was thinking with Leo, like when they when they are hit by love, they are hit hard. And you though, when you're hit by defeat, you are hit very hard. But you kind of counterbalance that defeat with success in something else. So even though maybe this door is really hard to have to push through for you, it ends up being, I mean, it's your nemesis. It's like this thing that keeps returning and you have to battle against and fight with. But it's what makes you stronger. When I was shuffling the cards out, I kind of made a funny face. <laughs> because the card that you got in this position for your nemesis, this has come out four times now in exactly the same spot. So we have Buffalo, okay? And then this is the card that has come out four times. I'm sure it's at least four times in the nemesis position this week. And it's she who emerges. And the Buffalo too is like a bit of a tower moment. So things that really disrupt your life. There it is, the rug being pulled out from under you. That feeling too of um, trying to shake that. Trying to shake that, like that constant rumble of the buffalo going across the plane, like even after the tower or the herd has gone by, you can still feel it and sense it. But this is what strengthens you. Enlightenment, mindfulness, and rising up. See, like the rising up. There's really a theme going across the collective here. Like the thing, it's, it's making it so obvious, right? Like the things that we continue to 
face in life that are difficult, that always seem to have this boomerang effect of who we are again with something similar to this or whatever it is that's playing through for you. It's playing through over like that in different ways, different elements of your life to make you stronger in that element. To make you more able to negotiate it the next time you face it. Because it's an, it, it, it helps you become who you were meant to become where we get this. Your strength. Your strength, your victory, your destiny, the search, the curiosity. I feel like the curiosity is really, really, uh, I'm getting like this focal point of finding success because curiosity is going to lead you to new things. And curiosity is going to lead you to new opportunities. It's going to help you keep an open mind. <clears throat> I mean, someone who has gone through similar things that you have, but didn't have the element of curiosity about who they are, what this world is, how it all comes together. That doesn't, they don't necessarily have a building block to put them into a new energy, to put them into a new cycle, to redirect, to shift them. So this really works as a shift to you. If anyone's ever said like your mind is in the clouds too much, um, why do you ask so many questions? Why are you always delving into rabbit holes? It's keeping your mind open. It really is keeping your mind open. Now, your next assignment is really... Uh, someone had something similar again. I wish I could remember. I can't. I have to go back and watch these. So you got the door to romance for your next assignment. Okay. And then you got the moth. And then you got she who creates creativity, originality, and spontaneity. I know that this card appeared in exactly the same spot already this week too. I know what the difference is. I'm thinking it was similar. Okay. I can't remember who, who had it, but instead of the door to romance, they had the fourth chakra, the heart chakra was going to open up, I believe with this card, which is really interesting. So the door to romance, it kind of is what it is. It's really hard to say that this card is something else. I mean, it could be how much you love yourself. I don't know. I mean, romance is romance. It's usually two people. So it's a romantic connection is your next assignment. Now with the moth, you're going to have to negotiate through this, working through whatever this romantic possibility is. Periods of, um, I don't want to say darkness because I don't mean it in like a, a negative way. Periods of the unknown. Not sure where this is going or where it could go. Coming into the light, a period, like there's a lot to explore in your next assignment. I think there's going to be a lot to explore about yourself enlighten yourself about things that you didn't know or kind of realize or connect with in the past, whether it was in other romantic connections. I want to say probably because if this, this is coming out with a door to romance, it feels an awful lot like you're going to learn things about yourself through someone else. And then if that's happening and this is an equal kind of healthy relationship, this person will learn things about themselves through you also. Now this is really, this is kind of a cool card to get with that. So she who creates creativity, originality, and spontaneity. <laughs> this feels like fun. It kind of feels like fun. I mean, she's got a bit of clown makeup on there. A little bit of silliness combined with this energy, um, which is very childlike. It's very youthful. I just heard someone... <laughs> I could hear someone almost coming through the camera saying, I don't like silliness in my partner. <laughs> well, you know, maybe you could use a little silliness because life is very, very serious. And if you're going to be in a romantic connection that is very, very serious, well, it might as well be, I don't know. 
like a lawyer to lawyer connection no like I think um because anything to do with romance if it has to do with your heart chakra it should also do have um, the heart is all about feelings and happiness and joy so those are expressed in many many ways more than romantic ways well or more than sexual let's say like feelings and emotions it can be there can be fun in this there can be adventure in this things that you haven't done before that you haven't tried perhaps because it's originality it's spontaneity it's creativity so that's a pretty interesting actually um a libra a really interesting energy about your healing process here and i think that your healing process can be a bit of a weakness and it's but it's a weakness because it's also related to your to what strengthens you and it is remembering to keep the balance of how you share your energy because sometimes you need to give some of that healing to you right now i want to talk to you about the witch's oracle card that you have that came out I've never pulled this card before. I am almost 100% sure of that. And not only that, I don't even remember this card in this deck. And I'm sure I've looked at all of them. So you got the hourglass. I am really curious about this card because I swear I've never even seen it in the deck before. So what I'm gonna do before I go and do the extended reading I'm going to read to you about the hourglass and give you the incantation associated with it. I need a sip of water. <clears throat> the hourglass. The hourglass is a reminder of time running out. It is one of the most common symbols of mortality along with the Grim Reaper and his Sith. Scythe. Yeah, scythe. It's been a long time. <laughs> they are believed to have originated in medieval Europe around the 14th century and were considered to be a most dependable measurement of time. They were commonly seen in use on ships at sea, in churches, homes, and workplaces. The meaning. When an hourglass appears in a reading, it is letting you know that time is of the essence. There is something that you've been putting off that needs to be completed and you are quickly running out of time. Do not delay any longer. What the heck? I don't really feel that. I don't know. I mean, unless that's resonating with you. When an hourglass appears in a reading, it is letting you know that time is of the essence. There is something that you've been putting off that needs to be completed and you are quickly running out of time. Do not delay any longer. So the incantation for this, like Alice's white rabbit, I'm late for a date. Time has flown by and now it can't wait. No more stalling. It's no time to act. I must do it now. And that is a fact. That's interesting. Like I'm not really getting that in the, any part of this reading. So take it as you will, but perhaps there's something that you have that you sense that you're supposed to do. And maybe the cycle is coming towards you. I don't know. Let's read the incantation one more time. I do like to say doing the incantation three times gives it, gives it, gives it the most potency. Like Alice's white rabbit, I'm late for a date. Time has flown by and now it can't wait. No more stalling. It's now time to act. I must do it now. And that is a fact. There you go. Such an interesting card. It's funny how I don't remember ever seeing this card before and I don't really see anything in the reading. It's like, well, you need to act on something like you're not acting on things when you should. So I don't know how that ties in, but hopefully it makes sense to you. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Libra. I'm going to go do your extended. If I see you, they're great. If not, I do hope to see you here next week. Until then, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.